Hey everyone, Dan here. We're about a half an hour before close on Friday, March 5th, and I wanted to talk about an opportunity that I called out this morning on my Twitter and uh, that I actually doubled down on in my own portfolio and sort of explain why and you know give you some information so that you can um, do your own due diligence and make your own decisions. Um, but let, let's go to the tweet that I sent out first and then I'll sort of talk about the rest. Um, so this tweet, as you can see, I sent it out at 9.25 a.m., so just before the market opened. So that was before the, the market was even crashing. Um, but, you know, this is the tweet that I sent out. And basically what I mean here is, um, you know, isn't there an incredibly high risk-to-reward ratio with iPod and iPoff? Uh, and I'll sort of explain why. So if we go to the SEC site, iPod and iPoff are what's called a SPAC. And a SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company, which basically means they exist only for the purpose of merging with another company right now. Like in and of themselves, they are not a company. Um, but what they'll do is they'll merge with a company to bring them public. Um, this is how SoFi is going public with, um, I believe it was IPOE announced that they're merging with SoFi. Um, so the 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 risk to reward um, portion of my tweet comes into play because of this situation here. So as the SEC describes, there's basically a floor to which the um, the price of the SPAC can be liquidated at. Because um, usually when they IPO, they are set at ten dollars a share. I think there's um, Bill Ackman's uh, PSTH actually. Uh, rolled out at twenty dollars a share, but I could be wrong at that. But anyway, iPod and iPod uh, IPO'd at ten dollars a share, and what happens is that money, because it's not a company yet, um, that money gets placed into a trust. And so, if they're unable to make a deal, or if something goes awry, and and there is going to be no acquisition, and they're not going to be taking anyone public, then um, the investors are paid back uh, what they're owed. Uh, pro rata. And um, basically, this example here is what you want to pay attention to. So if you went in and bought 100 shares at $12 a share, uh, and something happened and they needed to liquidate iPod or iPoff because the merger wasn't going to happen, then you would be paid $1,000. So you'd lose the 200 bucks, But, um, you know, that's sort of like the risk that you would have is that 200 bucks. So risking 200 bucks at this point is to me um, well worth it, which is why I bought more iPod and iPoff today. And let's sort of talk about why. So iPod and iPoff are both led by uh, Chamath Palihapitiya, and he is sort of a renowned um, investor, and he's just an excellent leader. You can I'm not going to do a whole bio of him on this video, but look up Chamath Palihapitiya if you want and sort of like see his credentials there. But basically with SPACs, you buy into the leadership. And if you think that the leadership is going to bring a really interesting, really like high potential for success company uh, and acquire them as part of the SPAC, then that's that's what you're buying into at this point, essentially. And so iPod and iPoff fell, um, I mean, here you see, which one are we on? iPod fell to 1081 today. So again, if you bought one share, your risk is really 81 cents. And iPoff fell to 1060. So 60 cents of risk per share because of that $10 floor. And so the reason that I think the, the potential for reward is so high is because Chamath has a really, really excellent track record. So you can trust the leadership, in my opinion, or at least I'm trusting his leadership. And um, the other thing is the life cycle of these SPACs. If you go back and look at, um, well, let me, so Chamath is basically going through the alphabet, is my understanding. He had IPOA, IPOB, IPOC, and so on and so forth. So now we're up to um, D, E, and F. And um, and so he has a really strong track rec record. And what you can see is the life cycle of these SPACs is typically, um, it, it opens at this $10, and then, you know, it sort of trades, 
not super far away from $10 while they're trying to figure out what company they're going to merge with and there's not really any news. Um, and then when there is a rumor or um, confirmation of the company that they're going to merge with, then the price will often go two to three times um, the share price of what it is. And once that sort of hype dies down, then it'll fall a little bit. And then when the actual merger is about to happen, and that ticker is going to change from iPod or iPoff to whatever the company is, um, the hype sort of reignites typically, and will shoot back up again. So you know, my thinking along this was, of course, none of those things are guaranteed that it's going to double or triple. Um, but what does feel like a guarantee, unless I'm missing something as it pertains to the SEC docs, um, there is this $10 floor. And so I felt really solid about risking um, a, a chunk of my portfolio by taking on more iPod and iPoth um, as it got down into the $10. I mean, that's just nutty to me. Um, and just, you know, trusting in, in Chamath and thinking that if he can bring the quality of company that I would expect him to, that, you know, this could be running up two to three times what it is today. And, um, and sort of like going through that typical SPAC, uh, life cycle. So those are my thoughts. You know, these basically got dragged down because the entire market was crashing. I mean, this was like the NASDAQ today. Um, this is the five minute chart. Um, like this crash and the crash that has been happening, all of this downward pressure <clears throat> um, has dragged the SPACs down with it. I think people are just sort of like exiting and getting cash on the sideline for when things stabilize and, and they can jump back in. So they've suffered because of, you know, the broader sell-off. But the reality of these SPACs is a special situation where they have this floor and that if they liquidate, then you are um, paid back your $10 a share. So if somebody has any other information that makes this uh, not the case, <laughs> please put it in the comments so we can sort of correct any mis misunderstandings um, or make sure that like people have as much information as they can. Um, I would say, you know, if this is an interesting opportunity to you, like, please, please do your research, talk to people that you trust, find information that's reliable. And, um, you know, before you make any decisions, um, you know, make sure that that you've done your homework and that you understand what it is that that you're doing. Um, so that's all. I thought it was an interesting thing, though, to talk about. You know, we talked the other day about um, stocks that you can buy into that go up when the market's going down, and that's a way to help um, curtail some of the losses that folks might be incurring because of the sell-off lately. And it just struck me that this is sort of another tool that you can have in your toolbox with these SPACs to see how close are they getting to their initial offering price, and um, and is that sort of like enough uh, risk to reward to to take a position. So that's all. Uh, I hope everyone had a good week, though it was a tough one. But you know, do your homework and keep your wits and uh, and build your tools, and you you know we'll all make it through. <laughs> Things will turn around. Um, all right. Well, everyone have a good one, and I'll see you all in the next video.